Poundland does this dummy security camera with flashing red LED light. And I have to say, it looks the part, but there is a way you can make it look even more convincing. You see, it's based on a, it's based on a push light actually, because when you push it, it switches it on and off, and it's like, oh, it's supposed to be a blooming camera. But anyway, it's got this battery holder in the bottom, and if you stick a couple of batteries in, and you click it down, oh, there it goes. Anyway, it's got this little red light. Can you see a little red light? That's nice enough, but uh, just think about it. When's the last time you saw a CCTV camera with a flashing red light in it? Because um, the majority of CCTV cameras do not have any lights visible in them at all. Or if there is a light, it's just on all the time to show that there's power. Or if it's one of the modern uh, network cameras, it's the one you can actually see the data uh, light flickering. But uh, this one, all this one does is say, sort of, fake, fake. Because, I mean, you look at cameras on the wall and you see the flashing light, you know it's battery powered. Particularly, there used to be a chip called the LM3909 and it was a fantastic wee chip. It's discontinued now, you can buy them at quite great expense on eBay. But it's quite a clever chip because you, all you needed was one one and a half volt cell and it used a capacitor and it just did a clever trick of um, charge the capacitor up and then swap the polarity or, or using it as a sort of like slow voltage multiplier and then it would just discharge that uh, capacitor in the series of the battery across an LED which meant that you know you could put in a single cell and it would blink the LED but it really was just a very distinctive just a flash once every one or two seconds. And the battery lasted ages in that. This one draws about 10 milliamps. So uh, every time before you go to bed, you know, you're going to have to remember to turn it off or on, or the battery's going to go flat very quickly. Or better still, if you want to make this look more convincing, just leave the batteries out. Anyway, let's take a look inside it. Not that it's going to be terribly exciting inside. Uh, it's going to be even less exciting because that uh, screwdriver bit is just a wee bit too big. Let's use the emergency backup bit. Which may actually be too small. Oh, that's not very good, is it? Curse them. This is better. It feels very chewy. It's like the screws have gone into a very soft, chewy plastic. So I'm guessing the arrangement is going to be pretty much what you'd find in one of those push lights. But I'm quite intrigued to see if the LED has its own little uh, chip inside it, because it's not like the standard flashing LED where it just like blinks quite quickly. It is a very decisive sort of roughly one one hertz uh, on one you know one second on one second off. Oh, the, the, this is a Ugh. yeah. This is quite hard to open, but I think that's largely because it's got big springs behind it. Oh yeah, I can see it. I can see all the springs bulging out. This could be a very exciting camera indeed. Ah, right. So what have we got? The LED is, there's no resistor or anything, the LED is just connected directly across the three volts. And that's quite a nice effect. I quite like the speed of that LED. It's almost worth buying this just for that LED. Oh look, it's uh, angleable. Oh, is it angleable or is it? It's, it, it looks angleable. But it doesn't. Okay. Right. Uh, this just wedges in, uh, so it looks angle of it isn't. Uh, it's got this sort of fake lens in the front, which is quite quite nice. Uh, if you wanted to look extra unconvincing, you can shove the LED under the fake lens so the actual lens of the blooming camera flashes on daft. That that would be extra unconvincing. Other than that, visually, it looks fairly convincing. As you know, if if that LED wasn't flashing, then yeah, this this could actually pass. Uh, as a CCTV camera with concealed wiring going into the ceiling. So, yeah, uh, I would say if you buy one of these for use as a fake dummy CCTV camera, just don't bother putting batteries in it. 
because it'll actually look a lot more convincing if it just sits ominously, you know, up in the corner of the room, just looking dark and, and watchy like CCTV cameras are supposed to. But interesting, I like that LED, that's quite an unusual, it's an unusual speed for the LED. Um, so yeah, it's, it's interesting, it's quite well made, but uh, yeah, yeah, just don't bother putting batteries in it, it'll be so much more convincing. Bonus CCTV footage. Uh, this thing came with uh, this little template, which is quite nice, just a cardboard cutout and some screws. Just thought I'd mention that, it, it's fairly complete, uh, if somewhat unconvincing, but I'm going to leave it in the corner here so it can watch what's happening. Anyway, when I was young, I uh, was born in a place called East Kilbride, uh, which was a suburb of Glasgow. And it was like a, a new town. It was like it was built specifically to deal with the overflow from quite a big city. And as such, it was mainly, uh, mainly housing. It was just uh, solid housing estates, but with some major features. It had a massive swimming pool uh, called the... Oh, the Dolan Baths. Uh, that was fantastic. It had an absolutely monstrous cinema. One of the one of only I think two in in Europe that had uh, is it seven seventy millimeter film projector. It, basically speaking, it was a custom built cinema back in the days when all cinemas only needed one screen, and you know it was just major presentations, and that was it. Um, not like the multiplex cinemas these days with all the tiny little cinemas all in the one building. And uh, the, the cinema, which was called The Cinema, uh, was round. And it, it was all like floor-to-ceiling drapes. And behind the screen, it had these massive speaker panels. It was... I've never been in a cinema that was as good as that original cinema in East Kilbride. But uh, East Kilbride also had something which was quite unusual at the time. It had a shopping mall. And when you, you know, a shopping mall, it's no great deal. But back in 1972, it was actually, for a place like East Kilbride, it was a major deal because it was like a massive complex at the time. It was just unheard of. And if you lived in East Kilbride, in fact, I suppose ultimately if you lived in Britain, uh, in, shall we say, the, the 70s, do you recall in Boots the Chemist, they had these Scary cameras hanging off the ceilings. I, I can't remember if they were right hard up against the ceiling. I think they were down a stem. And it was just this big, huge dome. It looked like a Dalek's head. And round it, it had really exaggerated lenses pointing out from all sides. It had about four lenses, I think, uh, that were just, like, ridiculous. Uh, and also, these things were shiny black and they had chrome trim coming right down uh, where the lenses were and then the obligatory big red flashing lights on them and it was called something like Securicam I'm not 100% sure about that but these things, I was just obsessed with them as a kid, I thought they were great because they were so ominous they just continually on the store they were just dotted all over it, they'd just occasionally rotate and it, you know, it, I don't think anybody was driving them. I don't even know if there were real cameras in them. But uh, they, they just look great. Uh, I, I was trying to find a picture of them on the internet, but, you know, that's an era that, whereas, like, you know, people these days, because you've, you've got a camera built into your phone, you just, if something catches your interest, you take a picture of it. I suppose, ultimately, maybe back then, someone took a picture of the 35mm camera or a 110mm camera. But, um... Uh, one, uh, and it's not going to be 110 millimeter, but a size 110 camera. Uh, look it up on the internet. It's in the history of cameras. It was a tiny little sort of portable camera that took a, a tiny roll, much smaller than 35 millimeter. But anyway, uh, there must be a picture of these. I, d I can't remember the name. I'd, I'd love to see what they look like now because they just looked so ominous at the time. Laterally, I came across another one that had a case more like this. It was sort of divided into sort of six sections. And each section had a sort of window like that with a sort of lens behind it. Um, and I, can't, I think they probably had the light in them as well. It seemed to be the fad at the time. And I, I came across one in a store that had been taken down uh, and I opened it up, well, as one does. And inside was just one camera pointing out one of those lenses. All the other lenses were fake and just stuck in with double-sided tape. 
And the, there was also, there was a motor mechanism, quite a robust motor mechanism on the housing of the camera that then attached the central shaft. And it had a set of limits, so it could only go like 306 degrees and then back again. And it did seem to be controlled externally from a control system. But the same place also had these uh, cameras mounted in the pillars in the store. And it was an arm that came out sort of like that. Um, and there was a camera, and I say camera, there was a tin can <laughs> mounted at an angle on it. Really, it, it was a cylindrical camera like that. Camera, it wasn't a camera. And if you looked in the end of it, uh, it had the lens and it had a little orange light, which was a neon. That's a clue. Uh, inside, because I opened one of them, <laughs> uh, was a geared motor. It was a synchronous motor with an end stop. And the main synchronous motors, 240 volt motor, uh, when you power them up, the, if you get the non-directional ones that will just go in a random direction. And if it stalls, it will just reverse direction. It's just the nature of those motors. They don't have a fixed direction. So inside this unit was for the for the neon because it just had a wee cable going into the back and it was a, a mains cable going in. I think the circuitry was inside the tin can. Uh, it had basically live neutral. It had a high value resistor and a diode charging a little capacitor, and then another resistor and a capacitor across it. A bit like the Nixie flower type light, uh, Nixie lamp. Yeah, Nixie lamp and Nixie flower light whereby the capacitor would charge up and then that would just blink very dimly, just it would just keep blinking re repeatedly because as soon as the capacitor reaches the forward voltage of the neon, it strikes, which is about 100 volts, and then it will steal it down to about 50 volts. So basically speaking, it would just pulse that light. But to get the movement, because these things would just randomly move to a random location, to get that, they had a device called a simmer stat poking through the case of the knob, showing... A simmer stat was used in cookers, the radiant ring cookers. You know the standard sort of cooker with the sort of ring and it's that spiral ring. And rather than any fancy thermal electronic control, no temperature sensing, they had these things called simmer stats, which were basically a bimetallic switch. And depending on the how far you turned it, it would stay on or off for longer. And it could go from just being brief bursts uh, of operation to uh, turn to the full position when it would just bypass the thermostat, the, the um, bimetallic strip mechanism. So uh, if you set them down to simmer, all they had was the simmer stat connected into the motor, just running straight off the mains, so that every so often uh, it would just turn, it would think it would be turning the radiant ring on, but it would be turning the motor on and then off again. So it would just, the motor would just run for a short period of time, then off again, and then it would be a big delay until it, it cooled down, then it would start again. And what that meant was these cameras would just randomly pan about. It looked quite good. And when they reached the end limit, it would move to the end, then it would suddenly stall and reverse, just because that's the nature of those motors. But, um, yeah, uh, you don't really see stuff like this. It all tends to be this sort of thing these days, just stuck randomly all around the place. But uh, back then when cameras were, they, well, they didn't have electronic cameras. They, were, they contained Vidicon-type tubes. Um, and they were quite complex. They were monochromatic as well. But uh, back then, I suppose, it made sense just to use one camera and then loads of fake lenses or or these amusing sort of bright orange fake cameras. But uh, yeah, fake cameras indeed, but, but done with style.